we have only two major seams to sew. From the bottom of this body edge out to the sleeve on both sides. We'll start with this bottom rib and what's called a half stitch weave. Start by threading up a blunt tapestry needle. Blunt because you don't want to pierce any of your yarn. You simply want to work in between the strands. Once that's threaded up, look at the bottom of your cast on edge here. It's almost like a series of loops. And what I do is just sort of pretend that I go over here and make a pretend stitch. Catch two loops at the bottom of that very end cast on edge. Come back, go back into that same stitch you came out of. This yarn, by the way, was the yarn that was left over from the cast on. Now, come into, here's your very end knit yarn. Remember your knit stitch, excuse me. Go into the center of that knit stitch and come up in the stitch above it. Go back to this side, find the lower knit stitch, go into the center, come straight up above it. Once you get this particular seam established, it's easy to do because you always go into the hole you come out of. Go into the same knit stitch you came out of, lift up the next bar, right into the center of that stitch. You want to pull this snugly, but not real tight. You've got to have some flexibility because knitting is, after all, flexible. Always work back and forth from one side to the next. Always insert into the center of the knit stitch. When you get about four stitches or so, so see how that's forming its own little knit stitch there? Kind of tug on it. Make sure that you haven't gathered it up too much. This half stitch weave is very handsome on a one by one rib. You can't even tell that it's there. It just looks like another piece of the uh, ribbing, another knit that's at the edge. You could use this all the way throughout the sweater and have really a handsome result. But I would like to show you a very similar kind of seam called a whole stitch weave. And it's especially useful when you have a color pattern. I added an extra color stitch at each end of this pattern so that when I put it together, it would come out right. Also, you don't always have to use the yarn from the sweater to sew up. You can use embroidery floss that's of a similar, similar color, and this is even a piece of um, tapestry yarn, needlepoint yarn, which is a very fine yarn. This is especially useful if you're working with a mohair or with some kind of blumpity bumpity yarn. In order to work the full stitch weave, and I'm just going to start and leave that end hanging, we can work that in later, you insert into the channel between the end two stitches. This is the same place that you picked up that sleeve. Come over on this side of the work, find the end two stitches, insert in that first channel, and see that little bar that's there? Pick it up. Again, once you're rolling on this seam, you don't have to think anymore. Notice I don't pin anything. I don't have to. I'm going into the hole I came out of, come back to the other side, into the hole you came out of, lift up the bar. Into the hole you came out of, lift up the bar. And you continue this all the way up. When you get to the bottom of the armhole, you just turn the corner, work right down the sleeve. When you get to the rib at the sleeve, you again switch back to a half stitch weave, finish it off, and when you get to the very end of that sleeve ribbing, make another little loop like this one. Just sort of a, a squirrely little fake loop at the bottom, and it will finish it off. What we end up with is a sweater with almost invisible seams. Up here, of course, you can see the decreases from your sleeve, and a neck edge that needs finishing.